Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and welcome back to another video. And as part of the Ask Split Suit a Question series, a bunch of people asked hand history questions. This one actually came via Facebook, and Shane prefaces the hand by saying, Hey Split Suit, I am absolutely loving the YouTube videos. In the past few months, they've helped me transition from a break-even, slightly losing player to a decent winning player, and I'm improving every day. A few days ago at my local casino, I was playing 1-2-0 to no limit and was in an interesting spot with aces. Here it is. Shane, I just want to say congratulations on the recent results. Great job implementing the stuff we've been talking about and keep up the good work. I'm really, really happy I've been able to help you at all. Hopefully this helps you as well. So in this hand, you decide to open with aces under the gun. Totally standard. Get called by someone you describe as an aggro fish. Totally standard. End up facing a squeeze from someone you describe as a tag regular. Decent person. Okay, not as standard. And here we are. So in this situation, we essentially have two different options. We're obviously never going to fold, so we could either forbet it or we can just call. So first and foremost, I would always start by asking myself, could I forbet here? And one of the other follow-up questions I have to ask myself there is, do I ever forbet anything that isn't just like kings plus or maybe just aces, right? So why would I want to take the action that tips off my exact hand? Typically not something that I want to be doing. So... If we do decide to forbid in this situation, I think the aggro fish is going to go away, unless he's just like super, super whaley and just does not ever want to find the full button, and I'm not quite getting that from the description that you gave me. And then if we do decide to forbid, I think the decent red goes away, unless he has exactly kings or exactly the other aces. I think this is just the kind of situation where if he has something like queens, jacks, ace king. I think he goes away when you come over the top because he probably views your four bet range as quite, quite narrow, which gives you a great bluffing opportunity, but not a great opportunity to go for a four bet with aces exactly, unless you're trying to balance. And I'm not really, again, getting that from the dynamic that's being described. So in this situation, I would say, okay, well, if I flat, what happens? Well, if I flat call here, I assume that the aggro fish is most likely going to call as well because it's only 25 bucks more for him. And then all of a sudden we're in a situation where it's roughly, what, about 2 SPR and it's totally automatic, right? There's like no questions going post flop. Everything's going to be really, really face up and easy. So given that, I think a lot more mistakes happen if we just decide to call here than if we decide to four bet. I just think that the decent reg is going to play a little too optimally in that situation against us and I don't really want to do that in this spot so because of that I would just call just like hero did and unfortunately the a fish folds that's okay I'll go heads up to it he decides to see bet for 60 and hero decides to call so there are two major cruxes to this hand pre-fop how to react against the three bet do we want to four bet it or do we just want to flat it the other crux is how do we react against this $60 continuation bet. And in this situation, I would just jam it here instead of calling. So the reason why I want to jam is this. If he has something like jacks, queens, kings, I want to jam it now before, God forbid, like a six, a nine, or a jack rolls off and all of a sudden he slows down right? I don't want that to happen. I don't want him to even consider folding an over pair at any point in this hand. So that's a major, major motivator for me jamming it right here. The other thing that I want to consider is that if the decent reg does have ace king, mind you, we block out a decent chunk of those combos with two aces in our hand, but let's just say the tag has ace king. If we call here, I don't think he ever double barrels, right? Unless the turn is very squarely an ace or a king, I just don't see him firing a second shell. So I see him playing very, very perfectly with ace-king, or close-ish to perfectly. And then I see him possibly being able to get away from over pairs later in the hand if, God forbid, a bad turn card comes off. So because of that, I just want to jam it now. If he has an over pair, let's stick it in and do it. Rather than do this fancy thing, God forbid, let a bad card roll off and God forbid, lose any extra action. And again, I think this is the most amount of action we're going to get from Ace King most all of the time. 
So again, I would just drill here. As played, Hero Calls, five of diamonds on the turn, faces this incredibly silly $50 bet. Hero does decide to jam it here, which is great. And again, it's kind of a little too little too late in my opinion. Again, I think this should have been drilled on the flop, but here we are. And the tag rig decides to fold. And Shane left an extra note saying that the tag tanked and then showed jacks with no diamond and then folded. And hopefully, Shane, you did not show your hand because you you definitely don't want to show your hand in this situation. So again, the major inflection points, pre-flop, do we call or do we four bet? Then on the flop, do we jam it or do we just call the $60 continuation bet? Obviously, there was really no consideration of folding at any point in it, any time of this hand. It's just when do we want to get it in? And Shane, from your question, it seemed like you were a little bit frustrated that you weren't able to get the rest of his money. And honestly, there are going to be plenty of times where you just simply can't or they just simply won't give it to you for whatever reason, either a bad board runoff, or maybe they just don't feel comfortable enough, or maybe they just really don't stack anything but the nuts, and you know, you trying is just going to be all but futile. So don't beat yourself up over that. What I would really heavily look at, though, again, is that flop decision. And I really do think that if you drill on the flop, that you get jacks to stack off way more often than my letting cards roll off. So in this situation, again, flop and pre-flop are the major cruxes and again major emphasis on the flop play not just calling it, instead going for the drill so shane thanks for the great hand and if you or anyone else has a poker related hand or question feel free to leave it on our google plus page leave a link for that in the description box and also please make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this type of video if you have any questions please don't hesitate to let me know otherwise good luck out there and happy grinding